Welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, today, we're bringing in a new property on the division of exponents, and it kind of combines the division with when you raise a power to a power. So the first property is going to be when you have a fraction raised to a power, you need to give that exponent to everything inside the fraction. I mean, we've kind of already done this. Which expression is equivalent to 4 over x squared raised to the third power? Remember, if you forget these properties, you can kind of use some of the other properties that you might remember. Now, if you have something to the third power, it means times itself three times. So it's like we're doing 4 over x squared times 4 over x squared times 4 over x squared. Right? That's 4 over x squared to the third power. But the property today is you are going to multiply all the exponents by 3. Now the exponent on the 4 is 1. So if you did 1 times 3, it would be 3. And then for the x, you have 2. So 2 times 3 would be x to the 6th. Last thing is do 4 to the third power. 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 more 4 would give you 64 over x to the 6th, which would be that final answer there. All right, let's get into some non-multiple choice problems. Not a huge fan of multiple choice. All right, 3 over x squared raised to the second power. We need to give that second power to everything. So it'll be 3 squared, whoa, 3 squared over x, 2 times 2 is 4, and then we can clean up 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 over x to the 4th. All right, over here, we'll give the third power to both of those, so it would be x to the 3rd over y to the 6th, then we're done. Can't do anything else with that one. Now, when you have it raised to a negative power, I like to show you guys all the ways I know how to do certain problems. Not just to brag, just to give you some options. Uh, so one thing you can do, which I wouldn't recommend this way, one thing is you can give that negative exponent to everything. So you can make it 3 to the negative second over 5 to the negative second. And then you're like, oh, well, 3 to the negative second would go to the denominator. 5 to the negative second would go up to the numerator. And then simplify. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. Great. That works. That got us there. And actually, it was fine. I said I wouldn't recommend it, but it was fine. Or if you have the entire fraction being raised to a negative exponent, you can flip the fraction and remember, when you flip a fraction, that's called a reciprocal. So we can make this 5 over 3 and then make it to the positive second power. So if you use the reciprocal, you can make it go from negative 2 to positive 2. And then you're doing 5 squared over 3 squared, which would get you to that 25 over 9 that way. So let's try that on B. Oh, man, there's another curveball on me. So first thing we're going to do is flip this fraction upside down. So we'll put negative y up top, or we could even call it negative 1y. And then the denominator would be the 2x. Now it's raised to the positive fourth. So this one is tricky because of that negative sign, but you guys are smart. It shouldn't be a problem. So we're going to give the fourth power to everything. So it'll be negative 1 to the 4th, y to the 4th, 2 to the 4th, and x to the 4th. So the reason this is tricky is because if you have a negative number, like negative 1, raised to an even exponent, all the negatives would cancel out. So it's actually going to turn this into positive 1, which you don't even need to write positive 1. So we would just have y to the 4th over... Now, 2 to the 4th, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, x to the 4th. We'll practice these other ones in the next video. 